Hallelujah. God is good. And all the time, I'm so, so excited and grateful that I got this chance to, you know, just share what God has put on my heart. Hallelujah. To our visitors, we welcome you to Movement Church. If you're not fellowshipping anyway, we pray and hope that this will be home for you. Amen. 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 Just greet your neighbor. Tell them that they look good. You know, just smile. I know you're wearing your masks. <laughs> but, you know, we can see your smiles. Hallelujah. Let's turn to the Word of God. And our key scripture is from Isaiah 53. And I will read. <clears throat> Who has believed our report, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry, dry ground, he has no form or comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by man, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were, our faces from him, he was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before its shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and, f and from judgment. And who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people, he was stricken. And they made his grave with wicked, but with the rich at his death, because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He, was, he has put him to grief. When you make his soul an and offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify men, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will provide him a portion with great, and he shall divide the spoil with strong, because he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with transgressors. And he bore the sin of many, and, men, and made intercession for transgressors. Thank you, Lord, for the reading of your word. Let us pray. Lord, this morning, we thank you for indeed you are in this place. Jehovah, I ask in Jesus' name that, Lord, O oh God, you would open our ears, my Father, to hear your word this morning. I humbly come and I ask, O oh God, that Jehovah speak through me, my God. None of me and all of you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 As I just read, today we want to speak about what Christ went through when he was on the cross. Amen. Many of us know the sign, you know, I had to borrow my daughter's Bible today because <laughs> it's got a cross. Many of us know that sign, but we don't know what it meant for Christ to go through what he went through when he was on the cross. Amen. So, that punishment of being crucified was in the olden days inflicted on slaves or on criminals. The Romans, if they committed a serious crime, would be um, crucified. But if you were crucified as a Roman person, 
it was seen as something that is so shameful and disgraceful. Amen. So this cross was a symbol of dishonor and it was brutal and shameful mode of death. Amen. So if you were crucified, hallelujah, it was shameful and it was a dishonor, not only to yourself, but also to your family. Amen. So just a historical account of how people were crucified. So if you were sentenced as a criminal, you, were, uh, you carried your cross to the place where you were going to be executed. And most of the time, it was out of the city. So from the time uh, you are, you know, the sentence is passed, the Roman uh, guards or the Roman soldiers would take you and then they would take you to their quarters or, yes, and then they would flog you. And as they flog you, uh, apparently the Jewish law, you could only flog a person up to 40 strikes. But with the Roman law, you could beat that person up until you were tired. Hallelujah. Up until your hands were tired. Amen. So they would, the sentence is passed. You are taken to the courts and you are beaten. And as you are beaten, they don't just beat your back, they beat everywhere, from your neck going down. Amen. So everywhere you were beaten. Hallelujah. And then it says that um, the whip that they used was called a flagrum. Hallelujah. And that whip contained um, sheep's bones. It was made of leather and it also contained some glass. So as they are hitting you, and those bones and glass are hitting your skin, your skin is being ripped off. Hallelujah. So if you are, being, uh, if you are a Jew, it meant that you were going to receive at least 40 of those. But if you were being persecuted under the Roman law, it meant that the soldiers would beat you up until they felt that, you know, everything on you you know, was hurting. Amen. And after the flogging, they would take, they would put the cross, uh, the crossbar, tie it on you, and then you're led out of the city. But even as you're being led out of the city, people can see you uh, because you'll be carrying your placard, which is, you know, telling people or heralding what crime you committed. For Christ, it was king of the Jews. For some of us, maybe to be that uh, stealer of a wife, <laughs> or you stole a goat, or you stole a donkey, hallelujah. So those, that's what, and so people would see that H. Moses is a stealer of a goat, hallelujah. And people would look at you and think, no, I, I will never steal a goat, hallelujah. So kids will also, you know, see that and they'll be mocking you, women, you know, men will be throwing rotten things at you and it will be so shameful and so disgraceful. It is also said that when this is being done, you will be naked. Hallelujah. So it will be so disgraceful. I mean, sometimes we, you know, maybe it's me, I can't really look at myself in the mirror naked. <laughs> Amen. Imagine somebody else looking at you. <laughs> so it's so shameful and it's so disgraceful. Amen. Then, like what I said, that the victim is taunted by people as they are going out of the city to be crucified. Then after that, of course, you get to the place of, uh, where you are supposed to be crucified and you are nailed to the cross. Hallelujah. It's said that they will give you a mixture of water and mud so that, you know, it numbs the pain. Hallelujah. So that was the process of being crucified in the olden days. Amen. So on the cross, a divinely ordained, beautiful exchange took place. Hallelujah. If you are reading from your sermon outlines, of which our title for today is Beautiful Exchange. So all the evil that was due by justice to the human race, to each of us individually, was visited upon Jesus so that all the good due to the sinless obedience of Jesus might be made available to us who believe. So that is the grace of God. 
Guys, we had no claim on God. We couldn't even demand that. But he did that because he loved us so much. Amen. Most would ask, why then did God decide to, you know, to offer up his son? Let us open same chapter, 53, verse 6. And it says, Oh, we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So what is the universal guilt of the human race? It is rebellion. Rebellion. We see that in Genesis 3. Hallelujah. The fall of man. And Romans even goes to say that we have all sinned. Hallelujah. And fall short of the glory of God. So rebellion is opposition to authority. Rebellion can become violent. Is in an, an armed rebellion broke out like in a city. But it, it can also remain unexpressed. Amen. Amen. Amen to all the married women. Amen. Amen, Amen to motion. Amen, Amen to motion. Amen. Amen to all the people who work under someone. Amen. Amen. Amen to those who are working under someone in a ministry. Amen, Amen to the congregation. Because some of you right now are rebelling. You don't want to say amen. <laughs> so it can be subtle. Hallelujah. Rebellion can be subtle. So that is the sin that we all committed. Amen. Jesus took our infirmities and he bore our sicknesses so that we are healed. Hallelujah. So that we are? So that we are? So if you are sick, Stand on God's word. Hallelujah. His word is true. If you are sick, you stand on his word. Don't look at your sickness. Yes, it's there. But whatever you focus on grows. Hallelujah. So if you're going to focus on the sickness that is in your body, that is what will grow. But if you focus on the word of God, if God says that by his stripes I am healed, Focus on his word. And that word will grow in the inside of you. And that word will bring the healing that you are so craving. Amen. Amen. So, number two, Jesus took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses so that we may be healed. Amen. 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 When Christ was going through that beating and, you know, that whip was tearing through his skin. Hallelujah. Our healing was taking place, amen. Our healing was taking place, amen. So when it's declared that by his stripes I am healed, take that word, look at that word, meditate on that word, make it your own word, personalize it. By his stripes I am healed, amen. 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 Number three, Jesus endured our shame amen. that we might share in his glory. Jesus enjoyed our shame that we might share in his glory. Matthew 27 verse 35 to 36 and I will read Then they crucified him and divided his garments, casting lots that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Sitting down, they kept watch over him there. So Christ went through shame. He was... Just the fact that they took his clothes, it means that he was naked. Hallelujah. He had nothing on him. And people could see him. Imagine his own mother was there. But the Gospels record that all the women that were around him, they were afar. Only his mother was near the cross because 
It, he was in a shameful state. Hallelujah. Maybe it's just me, but many of us here, it's just me. You know, sometimes it's, you know, you find it. When you're naked, it's a glass. Maybe it's just me. But imagine if it's the whole community looking at you and you are naked. So he was in a shameful state. Amen. And Christ endured that shame so that we can share in his glory. Hallelujah. So what kind of shame are you going through in your life? And many of us have been shamed. And when people look at us, they look at us through that lens of shame. That's shame. You know? So that shame, Christ took it so that we may share in his glory. Amen. Amen. So don't live in shame. Do not live in shame. Let's look to Christ, our perfect Savior. Amen. Because he died on that cross so that he can take that shame away and we might live in his glory. Amen. Amen. So Hebrews 2 verse uh, 10 says, For it was fitting for him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons to glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through their sufferings. So we have been made perfect, guys, because of Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. We, no need for us to suffer shame because Christ already suffered that shame. Amen. Amen. Then number four, Jesus endured our curse that we might share in his glory. Amen. Jesus endured our curse that we might share in his blessing. Galatians 3, verse 13 to 14, and it reads, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So what is a curse? A curse is the penalty levied for not keeping the law or it can be defined as a pronouncement of ill fortune because one opposes God's plan. Amen. So in Deuteronomy, it speaks of the curses and the blessings that were, you know, that were given to the Israelites. Hallelujah. And those curses and blessings were pronounced on two different mountains. Amen. So a curse is a pronouncement. If you don't keep the law, a curse will come upon you. If you don't keep the rules, a curse will come upon you. Let's just open Deuteronomy 21. Deuteronomy 21, verse 22 to 23. And I'll read. If a man has committed a sin, deserving of death, and he is put to death, and you hang him on a tree, his body shall not remain overnight on the tree, but you shall surely bury him that day, so that you do not defile the land which the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance. For he, for he who is hanged is a curse of God. So for the Jews that knew the law, when they saw Christ being crucified, they knew that ah, this, this is in the law. This guy is what? This curse. So Christ came so that he could take that curse, hallelujah, so that we might share in his blessings. Amen. 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 And what used to happen is, if you don't keep the law in the Old Testament as a father, it meant that that curse was going to be passed to your children, to your children's children, and their children's children. Third and fourth generation. Amen. An example of Achan. Uh, he stole gold and silver. Hallelujah. These things were meant to be dedicated to the Lord after they had defeated Jericho. But he stole those things, he put them in the tent, and he kept them. 
And when the Israelites went out to fight, they were defeated. And Joshua cried to God and asked, Lord, why are we being defeated? And the Lord said, no, there's somebody who has sinned in the camp. So they now needed to look for that person who had sinned. And we'll read from uh, Joshua 7, verse 24, and hear what happened to Achan. Amen. And it says, Then Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver, sorry, then Joshua and all Israel with him to Achan, the son of Zerah, the silver, the garment, the wedge of gold, his sons, his daughters, his oxen, his donkeys, his sheep, his tent, and all that he had. And they brought them to the valley of Achan. And Joshua said, why have you troubled us? The Lord will trouble you this day. So all Israel stoned him with stones, and they burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. Amen. So you see, he sinned, Achan, by himself, sinned. But everyone else who was associated to him, his family, his donkey, his sheep, his cockroaches, everything, was stoned and burnt. Why? Because of one man's sin. So in, if you broke the law, those were the consequences. Amen. It just did not end on you. But everyone else who was associated with you would also suffer. Amen. I spoke of the example that, you know, in the olden days, olden days, we used to play Mahumbwe. <laughs> we used to play Mahumbwe. And you know, when you're playing Mahumbwe, you play with sand and leaves and, you know, with trash. But one day, uh, my cousins and I, we were left at home. So uh, my dad used to own a butchery. So at our house, we always used to have like lots of meat in the house. So my cousin was like, you guys, we're just playing Mahumbwe here. We need to, you know, you know, we need to spruce up our Mahumbwe and do this thing like, you know, like the real thing. So uh, I will not name him. Uh, then he said, let's go into the house and get meat. So we went into the house, we were about 10 of us. This is only Deca. 10 of us went into the house, we took meat, beef, pork, sausage, meat, everything that we found in the house. And then we took pot and plates and everything for us to cook. We light a fire outside, we cooked our meal, and ah, uh, it was a feast. So one of our cousins now, she knew that, hey, what these guys are doing, this is wrong, and they're going to be beaten. So she was like, hi, hey, you guys, I'm not going to eat with you. When Gogo comes back, I'm going to tell her that you guys were busy eating, you're busy doing whatever. Uh, so we decided, no, let's just do this. So we ate. And sure enough, when my grandmother came back, she was the first one, and then Gogo, then she snitched, and she told my grandmother that ah, these guys were busy eating, and they ate beef, and they ate this and that and whatever. And then my grandmother was like, okay, that's fine. You guys, you ate meat. So for the next month, you know, or, or up to the end of the holiday, no one is going to eat meat. Everyone is going to be eating sadza and green vegetables or sadza and cabbage or whatever, you know, is going to be cooked. So my cousin thought, ah, no, these guys are the ones who are going to be eating, you know, sadza and green vegetables. But lo and behold, at night, when it was time to eat sadza, we just got one plate of sadza and another plate of vegetables. And my cousin, and she, so she was saying, ah, I didn't eat the meat. And my grandmother was like, no. You didn't eat the meat, but you were a part of them. The fact that you were there, it means that you are also going to eat what salsa and vegetables. So for the rest of the holiday, you know, we were eating salsa and vegetables. But what am I saying? I'm saying, it, when you were under the law, if you sinned, it didn't, no matter you just sinned by yourself, you stole a chicken by yourself. The fact that Billy is going to share and eat that chicken with me, Hallelujah. So he also has to die 
and the people that are associated to him. But guess what? Christ, when he came, he took that away. Amen. 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 So we don't need to endure those cases. Hallelujah. Because most of us, we say, ah, in English, because guys, Christ took away that curse. Hallelujah. Amen. So he took away that curse so that we might share in his blessing. What is the blessing of the Lord? Hallelujah. The blessing of the Lord is found in his word. Amen. So we need to, uh, you know, we need to know the word. Hallelujah. Then number five, Jesus on the cross endured our poverty that we might share in his abundance. Jesus endured, on the cross endured our poverty that we might share in his abundance. Hallelujah. We might share in Christ's abundance. Deuteronomy 28, verse 47. It says, Because you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and gladness of heart for the abundance of everything, therefore you shall serve your enemies whom the Lord will send against you in hunger, in thirst, in nakedness and in need of everything and he will put a yoke of iron on your neck until he has destroyed you so when christ was on the cross he was hungry he was thirsty he was naked and he was in need of all things because when he was buried it was not even his tomb the clothes that he was buried in did not even belong to him. So Christ went through poverty, guys. Because most of us, we think or we feel that we are in poverty. But Christ went through poverty. Poverty. The, the least of the least. He went through that so that you and I may live in his abundance. We may live in his riches. Amen. But guess what? You need to believe that word. You need to believe that word for yourself. Amen. If we may open 2 Corinthians, I just want us to see something. 2 Corinthians 8, verse 9. 2 Corinthians. Okay. And it says. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you, through his poverty, might become rich. Amen. That you, through who? Christ's poverty. When he was in hunger, when he was in thirst, when he was naked, when he was in need, he went through all of that. So that you and me may be in abundance may live in his riches. Amen. Uh, 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8. I want us to read. Yes, I want us to read this together. Everyone, let us read this verse. 1, 2, 3. And it says, And God is... We're just going to replace you and you're going to refer to yourself. And is it? So, and God is able to make all grace abound toward me that I, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. An abundance for every good work. In abundance for every good work. Abundance for every good work. Amen. Hallelujah. So Christ came so that he might take our poverty. Hallelujah. And then we abound in his riches. Amen. In his abundance. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Guys, we need to stand on his word. Amen. This poverty is not going to go because the or because 
I have gone and received water or I have gone and somebody has prophesied Kwandiri. No, it's going to take you reading the word, believing the word, and standing on the word. Hallelujah. I know we're a microwave generation, but if we don't stand on the word and we wish and hope that things will just change, it will not happen. Hallelujah. We need to stand on his word. Amen. All right, so we said Jesus endured our curse that we might share his blessing. Then we said Jesus on the cross endured our poverty that we might share in his abundance. Amen. Then number six, Jesus was made sin with our sinfulness that we might be made righteous with his righteousness. Second Corinthians 5.21 For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Amen. So, we are the righteousness of God by faith. Not by works, but by faith. Amen. Number seven, Jesus endured our rejection so that we might have his acceptance. Hallelujah. Because of time, I will just, we will not go through the, um, the verses, but during your spare time, read Matthew 27, 45 to 51, where Christ cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He went through rejection. He went through rejection, guys, so that you and I can be accepted. Amen. Then number eight, Jesus tasted death for us so that we might share his life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The thief comes to still kill and destroy, but Christ has come that we might have life. So that life is ours. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen, ladies. Amen, ladies. Amen. So in John 3, I just want, to, I want us to open this verse. So the Israelites sinned and they began to complain to God in Numbers, Numbers 21. And they began to complain to God. And most of us here, we look at the Israelites and think, ah, those guys, why are you going to complain? But Isusu, ah, we are worse than them. At least the Israelites will complain and then go back to God and ask for forgiveness. Some of us, we are still in that mode where we are just complaining and we'll continue to complain. And guess what? Even as we continue to complain and you are in that space of complaining, things will never change. Hallelujah. The word says, and as Moses, so, sorry, going back, and they complained to God and God sent snakes to bite them. And a lot of people died. And after that, they went back to Moses and said, you know what, Moses, we are sorry, we were complaining. Please just go back to God and ask God for forgiveness for us. You know, he needs to take away the snakes. And, you know, God says, no, I'm not taking away the snakes. I'm paraphrasing. I'm not taking away the snakes. Uh, make a, a, a bronze snake. So that when people are bitten, they just look at what? At that snake, and they will receive salvation. And then John uh, says, And as Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. So for us to find redemption, when we are going through those tough times, Christ was crucified for us. Hallelujah. So when we are going through rejection, instead of us looking at our rejection and our shame, the word is saying, look to Christ. Hallelujah. We need to look to who? We need to look to who? To Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even as we stand, may we read Proverbs 20. Sorry, Proverbs 4, verse 20. When Christ declared that it is finished, 
Indeed, it was finished. It is finished. That poverty finished on the cross. Shagapela, guys. That shame finished. Amen. That rejection finished. Hallelujah. It is finished. It is finished. Proverbs 4, verse 20 says, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. The word of God is life to those who find it. Hallelujah. It's up to you to find the word of God. It's up to you to look to Christ. Hallelujah. It's up to you to look to Christ when we're going through hardships, when we're going through shame, when we're going through rejection. We need to look to Christ who is our perfect Savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even as we just begin to pray, all of us, we know where we are lagging behind. We know the things that we continually crucify Christ for. We know what, you know, where our dis misbelief is. But today, I want us to look to Christ our Savior. Guys, no one is going to save you. If you think that the pastor is going to save you, that's not it. Pastor is not your Savior. Pastor is not Savior. Hallelujah. And Christ is our perfect Savior. So we need to look to Christ when you're going through hard times. We need to look to Christ when you feel that we, there's so much shame within us. We need to look to Christ when we feel that the world is rejecting us. Hallelujah. Let's just begin to pray. Lord, I thank you. I thank you, my God, Father, for you are the perfect. You are the perfect sacrifice for me, Jehovah. Lord, I thank you that I don't need to go through rejection because you went through it for me, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you, my God, that you died on the cross for me, oh God, Father, for my sin. Lord, you died for me, Jehovah, my perfect sacrifice. Lord, I thank you that you exchanged, my God, my rejection, oh God, Father, for your glory in the name of Jesus. I thank you that you exchanged, oh God, my poverty, my God, Father, in the name of Jesus, for your abundance, for your riches, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for that beautiful exchange, oh God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. For you are You give.